So, hello and uh, welcome to our today's uh, webinar, Argus and Symphony Data Exchange with uh, Argus and Symphony from Dante to Stark. Um, we already had a webinar yesterday for non Argosens customers. Um, probably the one or the other is joining today as well. Today, um, the target audience is um, customers who are already using Argus and Symphony, um, probably you all uh, here uh, in the meeting are currently connected via the Dante system to Daimler. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about uh, the options and possibilities and preconditions on uh, moving on uh, with the Stark platform. My name is Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing. And next to me, I have Christian Mittel, responsible for services and product development. development. Um, so what we, I think that's all clear here. Um, on the left hand side, we have a supplier. He's connected or we want to connect to the Stark platform um, with Argus and Symphony. On the other hand side, we have your respective tool adapter. Um, and the good um, thing we already have been informed by Daimler is, for example, that the Daimler Stark portal or the API will be accessible directly via the internet. So it's not necessary anymore to have any next connection, for example, like you probably have established with Dante. Uh, but we will, I think, talk about uh, these details a little bit later. Um, for a new setup, um, for a new project setup, um, what is what is necessary? What would you need and what is recommended? First, of course, uh, you would need the Stark adapter installed uh, on the Argus and Symphony platform. Then you will also receive with that um, the ready-built process template, um, which usually captures all the functionality uh, with regards to, to process and rules, uh, which have been aligned with, uh, uh, with Daimler and uh, suppliers already. Um, and then you can right out start with uh, the internal connection and functional testing. Um, so if you need support from our side, um, if you're not that familiar with, with Symphony, so uh, we would offer two days quick start package for that. Also, maybe for those customers which are not so familiar with the latest uh, 3.2 version of Symfony um, with the uh, new Java uh, process uh, um, definition support, uh, which replaces uh, the people, uh, the people uh, process models. So we would encourage you to book the two days quick start package. And after that, um, the custom acceptance testing and fine tuning can be done, usually by yourselves, um, but we can also support you with that, of course. So this is the one hand side. Um, if you are running or starting new projects um, and, and have uh, the current projects already finished in, in Dante, as you know, I think um, beginning with uh, November, the Dante data is still available, but in read-only mode. So all the projects, um, and uh, until this time should be migrated to Stark. And that means um, that, of course, we need to do all those steps uh, in the previous slide. Plus, um, what is, I think, very important for you, of course, the open Dante ticket will be migrated to Stark, but only the open one. So um, our information from Daimler is that closed tickets will not be migrated, um, so they will remain in Dundee, but you usually have them already in your system. So what additional additionally has to be done, of course, is that uh, new mapping has to be created. This may for sure differ from the Dante mapping because in Stark, the attributes have changed significantly. Um, on your hand side, uh, the, the, the attributes remain uh, for sure. Um, and the good thing is that um, the process template we have created will already consider um, that the, the open tickets are available in Stark. They will keep their Dante ID so we can simply update the persistence uh, in Symfony 
and um, these items then will be connected by or your items in your system will then connect it directly with the new items uh, which have been provided or migrated to Stark. So I think that's a good relief and makes the migration process hopefully very easy. So we would recommend also to book some support. Um, we believe that's about two to three additional days um, on top of the steps you have seen slide. And again, customer acceptance, testing and fine tuning, it's the same like before, I would say. Um, so then I will hand over to, to Christian. So he has, um, again, like yesterday, prepared a little demonstration and showing you the configuration again. Um, in the meantime, you can, of course, um, ask your questions. I will collect them. First of all, I have to change. So I hope hopefully have the correct screen. Yes. So now we see Christian's screen. Thanks, Ralph. Um, so I have just uh, I've just set up um, uh, a simply three to one version here. Um, maybe a couple of informations. Uh, First of all, um, we are we are pretty uh, settled now with the development of the Stark adapter. There has been there has been uh, so many questions. Uh, when will it be available? Um, so 4538 um, is is pretty much I would say um, a very good stable version. We have been starting um, a first onboarding project based on the on on this Stark adapter. Um, so, so from that end, we are we are fine to go. We are also uh, currently working on um, the process template and, and initial reference process. So this is going to uh, bring us uh, bring us uh, default imp implementation that we can use for for any uh, of the Dante project migrations. So we will come up with um, with all individual combinations like stock and Jira, stock and integrity that will be made available as part of the uh, of the default offering. Um, also, um, also as a consequence of the good experiences we made um, we made with the uh, TZ BMW integration. Uh, we will um, try to keep as much as possible with that standard process template so that in the future any kind of modification coming from the OEM site, um, in this case Daimler, can be injected into the template and then will be available to all of you. Um, from an from a, from a onboarding point of view, we have been in, in talks like a couple of weeks back with uh, all the responsible people at Daimler. And um, one of the outcomes uh, was that um, Stark, um, in contrast to, to, to Dante, will be available publicly on the internet. So one of the first steps that all of you should, should, uh, should take is uh, really to make sure and to find out how to connect uh, Symfony then, then uh, with, uh, with the public internet, um, usually maybe uh, through a proxy server. Um, the second thing that that needs to be done in preparation before we can start any any kind of migration or any kind of of, of connecting uh, to the Stark system is of course to um, to get in touch with the Daimler people and so that you retrieve your application ID and application token. I'm just jumping into the config set for the for the Stark adapter for a second. Um, so in environment, um, and as you can see, there's a couple of configurations that will need to be taken. The, the base URL um, for, for Stark is always static. Um, just, uh, just, there's just a difference between prot and int. Uh, then you will need an identifier and a token. That's the uh, authentication given by, by Daimler. Um, and also what we need uh, is, is the project key of the, of the um, Stark project that you're going to work work with. Um, the rest is is network related, so a couple of timeouts that is going to to be used to optimize um, the the network connections, and then the the abilities um, of configuring a proxy uh, per per Stark connection. You know, if you need uh, if you need that for for like uh, getting in touch with uh, with the public internet. So. Um, the other thing uh, that we have already reached so far with the process template 
um, is basically uh, is basically a, a default configuration for the for the project on the on the process side. I just I just bring it up. So um, obviously in this case we need a config set for for your tool. Like this could be Jira and integrity um, or anything else. And then a uh, configuration set for Stark that brings us in contact uh, with the corresponding Stark um, uh, uh, project. Then any kind of specific configuration uh, for your for your tool side here. In the case of Jira, we're going to need an initial type for new items and a project for new items. And then uh, since we're currently heavily working on a business scenario too, which is Daimler has detected a problem and then reports it back to the supplier, uh, it, must, it will most probably be these two mapping scenarios that we work on. One for the case in which a, a ticket is is has been has been uh, has been created by Daimler and it's, it's detected for the first time. And then also um, for the case of, 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 of existing tickets and updates. Um, from a workflow point of view, uh, there's still a little bit, there's still a little bit modification on the Daimler, Daimler side. We have just received this morning a version two of the whole specification. I hope you all get, get that um, rather soon. The end environment has been upgraded according to this version two. And we are in the moment checking out what what influence that has um, that has on on the process implementation. Um, so so that's that's really roughly speaking speaking about the onboarding about the set, setting up of the mappings. Um, version two of the specification uh, included a new the, a new list for the attributes and what we currently trying to do is, is is map those attributes against the old Dante attributes that should that should help us in in, in uh, creating these new mappings. That's that's one of the key points from that, that I think needs to be done um, also also uh, prior to to configure uh, Symfony. Um, Speaking about the migration, um, we have we have put a lot of focus on on that question, um, and and roughly what we heard is um, that that um, the Dundee tickets will be uh, will be uh, will be uh, migrated over to to Stark, um, and and the ones that are really relevant to us. Um, and to the Symphony process and to the overall uh, process of the migration uh, from Dante to Stark here are the ones that are still open. Um, from, from what we have seen so far, um, they are, the open tickets are going are gonna to all end up in a clear status, um, in which uh, then the process template that we provide will make sure um, that it hooks, um, hooks the correct items. So say if you have um, if you have Jira issues that are already in exchange with Dundee, uh, we're gonna we're gonna find the Dundee ID and the project inside inside Stark and through that channel we can uh, correlate it to the old persistence. So migration of the persistence data is then is then part of the standard procedure. Of course, uh, be, beginning with all the new tickets, um, the, the new persistence will be built up uh, going going forward. Um, from, from the workflow point of view, that's also maybe something that's why that's why we uh, proposed another maybe two or three days um, so that we can have additional discussions about the workflow because it will be different from what we had in Dante from our from our point of view, the, the, the workflow is, is simplified a little bit, but of course we have to correlate the workflow with the existing um, tool landscape, so means with the old Jira, for example, with the old Jira workflow, uh, just to make sure we, we don't, we, we do not get stuck um, or anything. Um, once we once we will so most probably we hope that we can finish the first um, the first reference project of onboarding by the end of February. Um, so as a consequence of that, we would immediately jump to another reference project to to try out the migrations. Um, and I would then try try to keep everyone in the loop. Um, but uh, but we are here in, in very close contact with all parties, and I'm 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 quite confident we get it we, we get it going uh, pretty fast. So that's um, that's 
kind of a first first overview from from my um, from my end. And Ralph, I would then open the session for the questions. Yes, great. Uh, thanks, Christian. Um, just see if there is anything I wanted to show. I think no. I think we have captured everything. Yeah. So uh, one what recommendation? One one hint. Uh, of course, please. Um, um, get your credentials from Daimler um, um, as soon as possible. So um, we already had a case where we started we started a project and um, the customer even didn't care about uh, getting the credentials to logging into the to the uh, OEM portal. Uh, so of course this is key, and I think everything is ready at Daimler side to uh, to get you onboarded. Um, so your I think what you need is the AP, uh, what are the credentials? Um, AP talk, API token, and yeah. so um, the and the application ID, and then of course the project key. Then uh, for for new projects, then of course. Um, yeah, first question coming in uh, is the process template uh, we are providing specific to the latest version of Argus and Symphony, or do we have something similar? Uh, for earlier versions with people processes, the answer is it's only so the process template only works with the latest version with 3.2x uh, of Symphony. So we are not planning uh, to build any people process template or something like that. So people developments uh, are, let's say, that we are building people processes has been suspended. So uh, of course our customers can still use people. Also with the 3.2 version, they can use the people processes. They can use their existing people processes when they update um, their, their um, product to the latest version. But we will provide uh, these kind of templates only in the Java world. Maybe Ralph, a couple of additions here. Um, I just want Again, to point to the fact um, that, that um, the only two uh, supported Symphony versions in the moment are 3.1 and 3.2. Uh, most probably, once we come out with uh, with a follow-up major release, 3.3, uh, somewhere down the road this year, uh, even 3.1 will be um, will be uh, no longer supported. Um, I also want to point. Uh, I also want to point to to the customer event. I will specifically uh, use the customer event to speak a little bit about the product strategy, um, and about uh, about how long we're going to keep the people engine. The good news that I have uh, right now is that we were able to migrate everything into Java 11 world. So um, we are not we are not in a in a hurry. Um, to get rid of the peoples, um, but please make sure that you update to the to the uh, current version of Symphony. So next question: um, Java script effort needs to be done for every adapter. Uh, so uh, templates for Stark integrity, how it could be requested, and do we receive any installation guide? Yeah, the, um, yeah. The answer is is, is uh, as soon as um, as you reach out out to us, um, indicating that you're ready with the with the stock um, with the stock project and and purchase the stock adapter. Um, also, let us know the combination of the tools, and we'll make sure you receive the template. And along with the template, of course, you'll get a get an installation guide. Um, there is no specific scripting effort needed because the uh, interface to Daimler is static. It is defined and it is not on a per project basis. So uh, that's a little bit of a difference to uh, to some of the older fashioned um, interfaces to OEMs like the one we, we, we have to push it. Um, it's so so Stark is, is is say rather on the modern side. Um, is Daimler migrating existing items from Dundee to Stark, or do they continue fresh items in Stark if they migrate? Okay, so this is uh, what we have explained uh, in the in the slides before. So um, as I said, Daimler is migrating all open Dante issues. So if uh, all the Dante issues which are already closed will not be migrated to Stark. So as far as, as far as yeah, we know. but obviously that that's a, I think that's the right decision. Um, so all 
all items from Dante which have not been set to closed status will be migrated to Stark. So this is our information. And our process template considers this information because um, the items in Stark will also have the old Dante ID and we can use that to automatically update the persistence so that in the background your, let's say, integrity or Jira items you have already been uh, created will be connected with the items in Stark, with the correct items in Stark, I should say. So this is the process. I hope this um, answers your question. Um, okay, now question regarding server clustering backup solution. Symfony system running on two or more servers require additional license. Um, so this <clears throat> has nothing to do right now with the with the Stark topic. It's a general question, but of course um, every question is welcome here. Um, yes, if you have currently a single server set up um, um, and you want to uh, have an additional server for clustering or, or uh, regards to load balancing and failover, then you would need an additional cluster server license. So for that, I would encourage you to contact your sales uh, rep um, to get a quote for that. So the next question, local projects are using different types of items in integrity how much uh, effort is needed to adapt the business, business logic. logic i guess uh, the this uh, the answer is uh, i can i can even show that for a second like part of the project template is uh, is the configuration uh, set that you're going to use per project uh, to connect to the um, to the say integrity side so you would just simply use two different config sets in in integrity and just like in my example here the issue type uh, that is used would be also part of the configuration of the process template towards integrity Okay, then uh, additional question. Uh, yes, um, we will send um, the presentation or you get a link for the presentation and for the video uh, to download again. Um, that is uh, that is uh, something we are always doing with, with uh, such kind of webinars. So you can recap everything we have said and we have showed in the slides or on the, on, uh, on the system here. Um, next question. What type of connection is required from our internal system with Stark as it is available in the internet? Um, you need an internet connection. So usually usually what we have seen so far is, is two types of, of possible solutions. So we have seen one customer uh, being able to directly connect uh, Symfony to the internet. These are all outgoing calls. So uh, the Stark system is not going to call <laughs> Call your symphony, so it's outgoing connections uh, on a TCP layer. However, in some cases, you would uh, maybe have to, to to set up a proxy connection. Uh, so proxy uh, to the internet is maybe is maybe the topic you want to talk to IT about. Um, also, once you get in these talks, uh, make sure um, make sure that you ask. Or uh, if, if, if an authentication is required against the proxy, uh, make sure you speak about the basic authentication. That's the that's the easiest way how we can set it up. I think it's already request reflected in the exactly. We can we can see it in the adapter, so it's pretty much uh, this yeah. part this part of the configuration. So we would say we want to use a proxy. Then there's something is like proxy dot argo sense is a server we talk to on some port three one two nine and then usually there's a user and a password attached to that yeah of course we uh, thought about that that obviously uh, probably most of the customers would not like to open uh, the internet connection to the symphony server which makes sense so that's why we implemented directly the proxy connection option here. Okay, so currently no other questions. So as I said, uh, you will receive um, an email with a link to the presentation and to the recorded webinar itself. If you have any additional questions, uh, just uh, shoot them in 
either through support or using your going connect your to your sales rep. Um, so hopefully we have left nothing open so far. Um, I think you can also um, you can also have the uh, the the adapter available. You can order it right now. So we will deliver it. Um, I think shortly. I think we are in the final steps um, for that, so that you have everything ready in time before migrating or starting new projects on on Stark. Um, and um, yes, I think so. Then we reached the end for the day. It was a very short seminar, uh, of course, but I think uh, we could provide you with all the necessary information. Thank you very much, and um, have a nice have a nice day. Bye bye.